Good morning. Well, this is Tuesday, and you know, Tuesday, if I'm going to do a chit chat, it's on Tuesday because Mr. Bill goes to men's Bible study. And uh, I'm not concerned about who, well, him, if he's listening to me, which he doesn't. He goes in and closes the door. But look at this the first hydrangea. He noticed it. He went outside, and we were looking at that. It's a mop head, uh, it's a blue hydrangea. Now hydrangeas, if your soil is acidic, it will be blue more like this. But if it's alkaline, it'll get more, well actually it'll get pinker than this. But this one must have picked up a little alkaline and uh, acidic soil. And I've got a little video there later, but this is grandma's face, you remember that? Well, I'm 81. I don't know how old this face is. I have no idea how long she had it. Uh, nothing expensive at all because Grandma never had any money. And it does have a chip right here. But that's okay. Alrighty. I hope all of you are doing well. And today, I was just going to recommend if you have an Alexa, and you listen to music. The other day, I was just thinking, I just want some good worship music. A lot of songs are just about, about us. But, you know, to me, worship is, the song is about Him. And so I uh, was thinking, who did I used to listen to? Well, I think... And they've been playing a lot at our church. It's by uh, songs by Maranatha. And Maranatha means come Lord. Oh come Lord. Oh come Lord. Or, oh Lord come. Yeah, to be exact. Oh Lord come. And uh, they, they were singing, just before I began the video, they were singing, the battle belongs to the Lord. And I thought about all of you and well, all of us, let me tell you, if you're a Christian, or but anybody, Christian or not, you're down here on this earth. Every day, there's little battles, if they're not big ones. And sometimes life is smooth and it goes well, but that doesn't last. We know that. So... Have I told you before, enjoy those days. Enjoy those days where you don't have... And then you feel guilty over somebody else. Okay, pray for that other person. Be there for them. But you enjoy that day when there is no battles at all. And he told us, Jesus told us that in this world, we will have troubles and trials. We will. It's not you may... You will. Oh, have you been watching The Chosen? Tell me what you think about it. You know, some of it, I'm like, why did they put that in there? It's not in the Bible, and I... The one about where he didn't heal, uh, heal that girl, that's not in the Bible, okay? So once you guys to know that. Because when he was here, he healed everyone. There was no one that he didn't heal. And, and it seems like when they make movies, they always tend to leave somebody out they didn't heal. Even in the old movies, they would do that. I don't like that. I mean, I know, but they're good. I mean, I have to be sad. The Chosen, they were, oh, they just... The things with Jesus sometimes. And that man who plays Jesus does such a good job. He really does. And I kind of like the one that plays Peter, too. The kind of the way he walks. <laughs> Leans forward. It's real muscular. Fisherman. If you haven't been watching The Chosen... Uh, I can't say that I was doing a lot too. But then Mr. Bill got me watching, and we and we caught up on the ones I had seen. But they've been getting new ones out now. But yeah, they did a great job. All right, I didn't even mean to talk about all that. 
All right. I did put some notes down. I did. I did. Let's see. Oh, well, this was sad, but not sad. So 6-6, six, six, which was a D-Day. Uh, my it's been 20 years since my son went to heaven. He was 40 years old and had brain cancer. And any of you are going through this with losing a child, if it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. He got me through that. He really did. In fact, I, I just think I got so close to the Lord during that time. Closer than I've ever been is when I lost my son. And I remember being leaving the hospital after his death, and I was in the car, and he just spoke to me and said, Sandy, this can make you better or bitter. <laughs> I feel like crying. <laughs> and I remember looking up to the sky and I go, Lord, I want to be better. I don't want to be bitter. And he answered my prayers. I've never been bitter or angry with God for a moment. But if you ha if you are and you have been, I understand. And, <laughs> and you can't you can't get through it. I didn't mean to do any of that. I just put that in. Okay, do you remember? This is really off. Of the, when I said that, I have to clarify this. That Susan Ford sent me some paper dolls. Well, I thought they were from Susan Ford because she was such a sweetheart. She had sent me these. Uh, wooden utensils and things for the kitchen at one time and um mr bill and i came home and there was a big envelope in the mailbox and uh i opened it up and lo and behold there's cutouts in here that i had been looking at but i didn't buy because you know i just didn't buy them i just looked at that particular set and now they're in an envelope, and I don't know who they're from. And so my thought was, oh, it was because I mentioned in the 50s how I loved cutouts. And I was in that suite, and I was says, but I don't know who these are from. And well, Mr. Bill was in the kitchen. He's looking at the envelope, and he goes, something about, well, it's from Tennessee. I go, oh, that's got to be from Susan Ford, because she lives in Tennessee how things can get mixed up. And so I contacted Susan and I said, Susan, did you send me something in the mail? And she goes, oh, I I don't remember. I go, well, I, I got some cutouts. And she goes, and I said, well, uh, it was something like that then. But she says, oh, I just thought you could use something like that to cut, uh, we, we girls, how was it? Like to go back into our childhood sometime or something like that. So I thought it was from Susan. And she apparently thought it was too because she had looked at these cutouts and she had put them into maybe a basket or her wish list or whatever. But when I said that to her, she thought, oh, I must have, I must have went ahead and ordered them. But it took a long time. She couldn't figure it out. Well, actually, they were from my sister, Debbie. And now, Debbie had sent me a little message one time, and it was, um, she showed me some pictures of some cutouts, but it was children, two little kids, it was three little kids. And I said, oh, those are so cute. I got to get something like that. So I thought, oh, Debbie's, you know, maybe Debbie... Well, Debbie would have sent that. If she would have sent something, it would have been the children because she had sent me that picture of that. <laughs> I was so confused. And then uh, Deb Debbie contacted me and said she sent me some cutouts. And she says, oh, well, it said they're delivered. I go, oh, did you? Well, Susan Ford sent me some too. And I go, which ones did you 
you know, she said, well, it said it's delivered. I go, well, I didn't get them. Actually, those were from her. And Susan just thought she did and forgot it. <laughs> and I thought, it can't be from Debbie because she showed me a picture of children. And this is, and just so happened, the cutouts I was looking at and the ones that Susan Ford had in the cart and the ones that Debbie sent me all were the same cutouts, same ones from that designer I was showing you. Okay, I can't believe it. So finally, my lightning fast brain <laughs> right. I'm sitting in the living room thinking, wait, what Bill was reading me, yeah, it was a return address, but that was Amazon's return address because they have a place here in Tennessee somewhere, their warehouse. That's what that was. And then I go, I better check with Susan. I go, Susan, my sister said she sent me those same cutouts. Are you, and, and she goes, oh, well, let me check. She says, I was thinking it was, took a long time for you to get it, and I didn't actually remember doing it, but I thought maybe I did send. <laughs> so finally I contacted Debbie. Yes, because she kept saying, you should have got them. It said they were delivered. Look how things get so mixed up and just crossed over. But anyways, thank you, Debbie. Sorry about that. I, I, I have to say, it reminds me of a story where Debbie went to the nursing home to visit my Aunt Hazel. And... I think Aunt Hazel's mind was, you know, she was in her 90s. She's not remembering right. And Debbie and I do favor. So Debbie goes and visits my aunt and takes her stuff. And this nice visit went all out of her way. And my Aunt Hazel told everybody that I visited her. And I gave her all this stuff. Debbie was so mad. I'm sorry, Debbie. So here it happened to Debbie again. She sends me cutouts and... And I'm up here thanking Susan for it. <laughs> oh, anyways, okay, what next? I don't want to, I know some of you say it's not too long, but oh. All right, let's see. Oh, okay, down here to, oh, Bill's book. Sorry about that little hesitation. I should be like cutting all that stuff out, right? Bill has, has been working on a book for about the last five years. And the things in his life, like he lost his wife, meeting me and all the stuff that's went on and us getting married and moving. Like I said before, we moved three times in three months. Oh my goodness. All of this, he, it's been hard for him to finish this book. And it's historical fiction, and it is about his family. And the one little boy in this book is Frederick. Well, that's his, the line from his father to Bill. Now, Bill is 82 years old, and he wants to get this book written because if any of his children or grandchildren should be interested, that is, it is in writing. It's there for them. And I wanted so bad for him to get that finished. And yes, I did encourage him about it. Well, so I wrote the title for the book and we titled it, And They Survived. And I painted the picture for the cover because, you know, it's expensive. All of this has been very expensive. Uh, and yeah, he, he was, really upset over it was something now if you're uh familiar with this it's called is a dm let's see i should be quiet with my paper remember before that was loud but oh dmca charges and the publisher is telling him he needs this and it's another like nine hundred dollars almost but finally he's decided He's not getting that. He doesn't need it. It's, it's something where, because he's on Amazon now with the book. He just got it on there. That 
um, oh, and, it, and the name, the author would be William Proper, P R O P E R. Uh, well, actually, the proper way to say it is Proper. His last name is, is pronounced Proper. I call him Proper, I call myself Proper. <laughs> but, um, anyways, he decided not to do it. And, but that was just something that was really upsetting him and heavy on his mind. He went Friday to Huntsville, Alabama to a men's conference. And he called me a few times from the hotel. I don't, I don't think he minds me telling, but he thought that the phone was hung up but we were talking and we just got through talking and I heard him say to the other men in his room, because I think three of them got a room, and he said, I really love that girl. I thought that was so sweet. And he brought me a t-shirt home and a necklace. But this necklace, I had it on yesterday, but this necklace is from my daughter, Dawn, for Mother's Day. She sent it to me. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I bought handles for my cupboards. I'll be, uh, have a clip on there I'll be showing. It's just, you know, sometimes you need an update in the kitchen, but it's so expensive to do stuff. But since I got that refrigerator with that brushed silver, uh, now my handles on my cupboard were gold. Oh, and I thought, oh, that's going to be so expensive. I got them so inexpensive on eBay. In bags, you can get bags of them. I think I paid 40 some dollars for 60 some handles. I mean, that's an inexpensive update to do as many. Because I had, well, just in the kitchen alone, I had 31 handles I had to change. But I also went into my utility room and did all of those too. And then I ordered, for, there's this built-in cupboard that we have in the kitchen. And it had these gold plain knobs on it. And I bought crystal knobs, $4.99. So I'll be showing those too. Oh, what else? Okay, uh, Suzanne, the lady across the street, she uh, invited several of us ladies over in the neighborhood, and uh, we just got together, and everybody brought a little something to eat, and it was just so nice visiting like that. But she's very, she's just such a gracious hostess, and she just loves doing it. I think she calls her house, do drop in. Isn't that cute? Oh, then yesterday, Bill had to go pick up some prescription in town, and he took me to two different Amish stores. And uh, they had all kind of stuff there, but they also had a little one little area with uh, homegrown vegetables and stuff. And I bought, you know, some nice tomatoes. They had some a lot bigger than this, but this was this one could sit for a little bit. <laughs> So I didn't have to use it immediately. And I bought just a few peaches. Can't wait to eat these. Ooh. And a cucumber, stuff like that. What else did I get? Yeah. Oh, and then in the store, while we're in the store, they had um, a little area. But actually, he told me that it was Hispanic people that were running that little restaurant part in there. Just a little corner of it. And it had a big sign up there that said, we are not a fast food outfit. <laughs> Because it took a while, quite a while, but it was really good. They, uh, we just went ahead and got a cheeseburger and we took it home with us because we had a plant in the car and stuff like that. And the dog was home, we needed to let her out. So we just took our cheeseburger home and some waffle fries. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, we bought some netting for our tomato plants because now, I got a question to ask you ladies who grow tomatoes. And I am a master gardener and I've grown a lot of tomatoes, but I've never had this happen. I'm growing the uh, mortgage lifters, you know that, I've told you. All right, and, and they are in pots on my, on my deck. Well, the blooms came on nicely and then usually after the bloom falls off behind that grows your little tomato. Well, 
all it was left was like the stem, but nothing growing. I'm thinking, I should have some tomatoes on here started. So the other plants that had the, uh, like those grape tomatoes, or you know, they, they were getting little tomatoes and things. And then I noticed on the bottom of the plant, I happened to notice there was one tomato about, I don't know, about that big around or bigger. And I uh, wait, why aren't these growing up here? And then I noticed there was a lot of them like that. Just the flower, the blossom was gone, no tomato behind it. So I noticed though, we've been getting birds. So many birds are always in the pot. I've seen them picking around. Have you ever had birds eat off the little beginning, I guess, of a tomato plant? <laughs> I don't know. And, but when I talked to the Amish lady at the store, she showed us some spray that was called, I think it's Blossom Set, but I will be showing that on here too. So I went out yesterday and I spray, they said you spray the blossom and little buds and all the of surrounding foliage, just, you know, around it. And I did that. I did all of them, but I waited. I didn't do it in the bright sun. I waited till I could have a little shade in, and my pots have rollers on the bottom and I rolled them over to the shaded area and I sprayed them. And then I had some extra potting soil I dug out of the garage and put that all into the pots too because you know how you put your potting soil in and then it kind of settles down so I was able to use the rest of that soil up and especially with tomatoes if you take the bottom leaves off you can add more soil and everywhere the soil touches you're going to get more roots which is good so I got the netting for that one particular plant I bought netting and we wrapped the square cage the whole cage wrapped it up and then I just took some jute. Well, I, I actually took the branches from the tomato that were kind of going out through the cage, brought it back a little tight. And I used those strap things, put those on, put the netting around it, <laughs> gave it some tomato food. Oh. It'd be a lot easier just to go to the store. Oh, and I was so excited. Here I've been growing these tomatoes, saving seeds, because I can't find these mortgage lifter plants. They had them at the Amish store, but I just didn't have, I'd have to get another big pot and I'd have to get more soil and I don't have any room for another big pot. But next year, instead of me starting from seed, like I always do, I'm gonna go there and buy them. And she knew what mortgage lifter tomatoes were right away. All right, so the last thing I will tell you is, and I got two more that I'm going to read. I'm going to read to you today. But Millie, you know, from sitting around during the winter, I felt like she's getting a little on the chubby side. And I feel sorry for her because she gets bored. She's a hunting dog. But you can't just let him loose out here. But we got a chipmunk in our garage. We did. And it was in there for days. She would spend the whole day in the garage. <laughs> She's a hunter. I mean, she just would just be out there chasing that chipmunk and trying, or just waiting for it to come out. And we wanted it out of there because it was getting in our bird seed. It put a hole in the bird seed. So we left the bottom of the garage door open just a little bit for the chipmunk to get out. But then that might let more chipmunks in. But finally it left. I mean, I didn't want her to kill it. I really did not like to see anything killed. We have so many chipmunks out here. They're all over the place. But uh, I did, we didn't want it in the garage getting in everything. But it was good for her. She has lost weight just from chasing the chipmunk. So ladies, if you want to lose weight, chase the chipmunk. <laughs> all right. That's enough yakety -yak yak over here. I'm going to read to you. And those of you who don't want to hear it, bye. <laughs> you know what I was going to ask you guys too, though? There's, I see that there's a lot of people who are watching me, are watching my channel, 
but you're not actually subscribed. Would you please check? I'm getting closer to 14,000, but would you check right below the video? And it's, it's a small box, I think, in gray, and it just says subscribe. Just click on there. And there's, you never, ever, ever have to pay anything. And nobody's going to bug you, but um, I don't know if they'll let you know when there's a new video on or not how that goes. But it'll kind of pop up because I've got a lot of people I subscribe to. But anyways, if you do that, I appreciate it. And for some of the other ladies that you watch, if you watch them and you haven't subscribed, they would like that too. All right, Psalms 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fear. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Wow. And he delivers them. So when they're talking about fear, it's just this, it's like this awe of the Lord and respect. And those who do have this fear and awe of the Lord, it says that the angels encamp around them. Wow, that's wonderful. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Wow. Come, my children, listen to me, and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, if you love life and you want to live a long time, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Don't speak evil and don't speak lies if you want to have long days. Turn your evil, turn, I'm so sorry, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. I love peace. And you have to pursue peace, apparently, is what it says. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Oh, I love that. He's attentive to our cries. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Oh, that's wonderful. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So if you are brokenhearted, remember, he is close to you. And he will save those who are crushed in spirit. I've been there before. A righteous man may have many troubles, See, if you have troubles, don't think it's because you're doing anything wrong. It said right here, not necessarily yet, but he says he may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. All. <laughs> he protects all his bones, and not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servants, and no one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. And that's it. And that was in Psalms 34. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, I'm going to pray for you now. Dear Lord, I just bring everyone before you who is listening right now. All the ladies and the men too. Father God, 
I just pray that whatever problems they're having in their life right now, whatever troubles there are, that you would deliver them, Lord. Draw them close to you. Let them know just how much you love them. I just pray a special blessing on everybody. Heal their bodies. Help them with their finances. Bless them financially. Bring peace into their lives and direction. Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. God bless you. I'm not sure you're able to see this or not, but see the blossoms fell off, all right, here. But this is a tomato plant. But there's no tomato behind it. Cannot figure what that is. I've never had it. Never had this problem. Now we've had a lot of rain. And at the nursery, we were talking about that. And some people think that's what it is. They're having trouble with their plant setting. So we got some um, blossom, what is it called? It's stuff you're supposed to spray on there and it keeps, it causes to have more blooms and keeps the blossoms on and whatever. We'll see if it works. But let me know if you have had that problem. I've never had that problem before. These are some of my other ones. Now this is, um, it's a type of a rather large cherry tomato. That one's doing fine. And here's another one I have, same kind. And this is that mortgage lifter that nearly drowned Oh, but I see it did have this forming flower, so I guess it's going to be all right. I was about ready to give up on this thing. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be this big, but instead it's that big. That you might enjoy seeing these flowers we just picked up. It was at a little um, Amish or Mennonite store. And they're called Cobri, I don't have my glasses on, Purple Bling. But it's for full sun. And that, what is that last word? Cala Brachoa? I don't know. It must be some type of flower. able to see that. But anyways, I thought we'd hang them by our kitchen window because our hummingbird feeder was leaking. And I go, why don't we just put some flowers there that the hummingbirds like? Well, I don't know if they like these flowers, but it looks like they would. They like things where their beak will go into it. So we'll find out. That'd be pretty by the looking out the kitchen window though. Okay, we got it hung outside now. So we can enjoy the flowers and hopefully see if some hummingbirds come and visit. I thought I'd give a little uh, YouTube to you to give you an idea of what's going on here. <laughs> Guys, people, are, these are all guys. All guys. Hello, John. <laughs> Roy. Okay, baby, here's your YouTube, I'm sending you.